immediately on the front panel of Nora, you see that we have not three, but five knobs. As a carryover, if you're familiar with Unicorda, which I've also done a deep dive on, you'll recognize the color and dynamic knobs. And instead of a spaces knob, we have a reverb knob. Now the two additional ones, which we don't find in Unicorda, are the tonal shift and the delay knob. So as we're familiar, the color changes the tone or timbre from soft to hard. So as we turn it to the right, it'll make it sound harder. Uh, I think we should hear what it sounds like just without anything first. And we can do that right here. Basic pure setting. So, as we turn the color knob to the right, it'll make it sound crisper. Once again, using extreme examples to make the point. As we turn it to the left, it becomes softer, which is a tone that I like. Now, dynamics, as we know, if we turn it this way, we turn it to the right. Let me read it. Compresses it when we turn it left or expands it when we turn right. So com by compressing it, it only uses a portion of the samples. As we turn it over to the right, it expands. Which means that as I play softer, it will be very soft, right? If you wanted to play softer than soft, that can be used to great effect, I believe. Um, but if you wanted a more limited sound, which I do, I'm liking the sound of at this point in my my sound palette exploration. I just like the uh, maybe not quite to this much. This is again an extreme example to show you. So if I dial it back, like let's say like this, and then we can see what that does. Now 
All right. So that can be used to great effect. Now, our two newcomers, tonal shift and delay. So tonal shift, now this was done by it changing the playback speed of each sample, which results in a formant, formant? formant and character changes. Turning the tonal shift knob to the left will make the instrument sound sharper. Turning it to the right will result in a deeper, darker tone with a much less defined attack. So let me see sharper. So this is playing with sample speeds, playback speed. Now it doesn't make it sound chipmunky as you'll, you'll see in a minute here. Once again, extreme for effect. And then if I turn it to the right, imagine this as being like a harp. Now, with that being a lot less defined, it actually covers for some of my, <laughs> my finger slips, but it just adds a whole different color palette. And we're only on the front panel so far, and we've covered just these three knobs. Now, if we were to go over and turn on the reverb, and I'm gonna bring it back to where it's more defined again, just so we can hear it nicely. So we're gonna zero everything out. Zero, zero. Okay, reverb now. Okay, now that's just a little bit. Let's turn it up all the way. So that's big reverb and it's measured here in decibels. So let's uh, see, so adjust the levels, the reverb sends in depth. Re now in the in-depth reverb tab, uh, settings rather can be found in the space tab. So we do have space, but it's, it's not assigned to a knob, but rather to one of the four sections up here at the top of the instrument. Now, if we add delay, before we go into those four sections, we're going to look at delay. We're going to turn reverb off. Delay also has in-depth settings found in the space tab, and it adjusts the level of the delay sound. So here we go. And these, oh, uh, these little lights, uh, or if you want to call them lights, toggle it on and off. So we'll put this up to the, the top, 0 dB. Okay, so that is a very long delay, right? And that can be used to great effect as well. So let's try something here. Uh, I've turned it down a bit. Let's see. Let's test it real quick. It's 
go to about halfway. I think that's about right. Let's see, what does it go to zero? So, and 100. So let's see if we can find 50. It doesn't say 50, but that feels like the 50% mark anyway. So here we go. Not an everyday sound, but that's an effect that you can do with those. Okay, let us dive into the now four main sections of Noir. So we, up here we have the Piano tab. In this page, there's different tone and noise adjustments. So let's click on that. Here we go. Now we're on the basic pure right now. And just to make sure of that, there's a bunch of presets here. I'm just going to reset everything very nicely. The release samples. There's four categories inside of this. As you can see, anatomy, noises, tone, and settings. So release samples, we can turn those off. Okay, that sounds like a recording. Release samples turned on. That adds the sort of dying string sound that makes as for an, another level of realism. Our pedal resonance, which which is the different resonance that, well, let's just read what it says here. I'm pressing the sustain pedal raises all the dampers at once here it does say enabling all the strings to resonate sympathetically this adds to a much fuller and deeper sound to the note the resonance knob adjusts the volume of these string resonances when the sustain pedal is down so i pretty much just leave it right there although you could adjust it Here is it something like negative. There we go. Put it right back where it was. Now, the overtones. Enable the overtone samples. After hitting a key, the corresponding strings may resonate at their fundamental or overtone frequencies when other strings are triggered. These overtones add liveliness to the sound. This is also known as sympathetic string resonance. So we had our pedal resonances sympathetic resonance when the pedal is depressed, but now we, we have overtones is with it not depressed. Let's, let's test that real quick. So I'm gonna do like I've done before. We're gonna hold down these notes and press. And you can hear these notes vibrating sympathetically in the background. We could do this on another octave. Let's try A. All right. And so we see that the sympathetic resonance adds yet another layer of realism. Now below that, overtone sympathetic resonance, same thing in this case. Below that we have the attack. Now typically I leave this like here because this is the typical piano attack. And if we bring it all the way to the top using an extreme example, we've created a metal pad. So we bring it da back down here. Still sounds like a piano, but kind of has that softened edge to it. There, well, there's 
not an edge because it's softened. All right, so we'll leave it at zero milliseconds for the sake of, <laughs> of trusting some other things here. Now the noises section, pedal, this activates the noises created by the sustain pedal. Now, by default, this is turned off. So when you press the sustain pedal, you might hear my pedal on the floor, but you're not hearing anything. So let's turn it on. By default, it's set at this volume, which I find for realism, it's generally a good idea to have it at a lower volume so it doesn't overpower everything. But let's try here. Now on this one, it sounds like it's combined the the uh, the sound of the pedal with the sound of the strings vibrating as you depress it. Editor Jaron here, interrupting your experience to point out that that is 100% correct. If you go down here next to the pedal, you have these two lines with circles. If you click on them, you will see how you can adjust the individual settings. Now the rumble, we could even make it more rumbly. We could bring it down. We could turn the string sheen down, turn it up. Oh, let's turn them all up for sake of example. Just the pedal rumble. With the dampers. coming in and out of the strings, and then the strings themselves vibrating as they are released and dampered. So you can make even more adjustments. We can turn this all down. Like here, generally, I keep the, the string sheen down like that. Which is also helpful when you go to turn the whole thing up like this. You can then come and say, okay, we don't want the strings so loud. Maybe you want the dampers a little softer, a little more rumble. And that's about what I'd say it sounds like with when you're sitting in front of an actual piano. All right, and that's another level of realism. Here we have the mechanical noises created when hitting or releasing a key. So this is all the wood mechanics of the hammers and everything. So let's hear that. So that's another level of realism that can be added. And like I say, this is a good volume for it. You generally don't want them too loud because then you have something like this. But if you did want that effect, sometimes you want a very, if you want a very dramatic effect, let's try this. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you nearly jumped out of your skin at that point, that is the appropriate response <laughs> for a sustain pedal being that loud. And we're going to turn these sounds back down to roughly where they were. I think I'll have that 11 dB and that eh, generally about 23, 22, or 24 is a good place for it. Now, mechanical sounds, mm, right about there. We'll just leave it there. The only issue I've run into with these is, is when you have a system with a subwoofer, they tend to kind of make a lot more noise in there because there is a low frequency and you generally don't want to send your mechanical sounds to a sub, anything like that. So this does not have the roll off that um, Unicorda has for those frequencies.
Hello, Editor Drawn here. You know what? Editing this, and I look back and I thought, wait a minute. It's got those lines there, you know? And I thought, you know what? These probably do do something. And sure enough, right here, we have note off, note on. Here's a low cut. This adjusts the amount of low frequency reduction for mechanical noises. Also, it adjusts the ratio of mechanical noises created when hitting, note on, or releasing, note off a key. Now, this setting frozen strings it's adjusted to note off and if I put it back to the settings that we had before it's right there in the middle so low cut there's not a whole lot of it but if you turn it way up here to 600 Hertz that's actually quite high not very low at all you could cut off most of your low frequency rumble so that would work well with a sub moving along down below the mechanical we have felt the felt samples activates the noise created when the hammers hit the felt strip which is positioned between the hammers and the strings. Right now it is at minus 100 dB. And we can turn it up. Alright, so that can be another great effect as we look over here. If you don't like felt sounds in your music, that's fine. I find I like noise and all the the, uh, the atmosphere that noises create, and so I like to add certain noises into my piano sounds. Now that I, especially since I have the ability to do so. All right, so that's felt. Tonal depth adds additional resonance for achieving a deeper sound character. We're now moved on from the, the noises. See, we did anatomy noises. Here we are in tone. So we access that and typically I leave it right there in the middle. So let's see what it does for us. I'm going to turn the felt off for the sake of this example here. on. You can hear a little more richness. And here low keys, this changes the volume of the keys below middle C. Turn it to the right, it increases. As you can see there, turn it to the left, it decreases. So if we wanted to, for example, make them softer, Now, I didn't change my force in playing, it just made them softer. So it's usually at about zero, but if you wanted to increase it, extreme example. Once again, playing at the same velocity, but the volume being increased, they actually sound louder. So we're going to put them back to the middle. And the final section of the tone category here is the sub. And the sub sets the split key below which the sub samples are tr being triggered. Okay, that one. So it's G sharp to... Mm, so I can actually change that? It has a toggle switch, but I have not, I have yet to be able to change where the split point is. Um, although I can change the volume of the sub. Um, we're going to have it at negative seven, negative eight. Uh, oh, there it was, negative seven. Oh, come on. 
Negative 7. Okay. <laughs> I don't think it stayed there. It doesn't want to stay. There it is. Okay. Now, this button turns it on and off. So, let's let's show it. Turning the sub back off. Turn it back on. And that just adds an, another layer of richness, which you would not otherwise have on a typical piano. And that could be used to great effect as well. You don't, in fact, for some pieces, you don't even need a bass instrument because there it is in your piano, like so. I could go on, but you get the idea. Now, as we look over at the settings tab, we see that we have velocity. This is pretty similar to the velocity on una corda and in fact on the other piano instruments that are made by native instruments. And this gives you access to the presets. So linear, I usually leave it there because Seems to be the best response for this one as I put it down to harder. So I'm going to put it to softer now, see what that does. All right. And I'm going to change it as I play. So this seems to be doing the same thing as some of the other knobs on the front. The uh, the dynamic, not the dynamic, the tonal shift, and yes, the dynamics, and the color. So harder on this one opens it up so you can play harder with great ease and softer. Let's go to softest now. Seems like they all top out about just about as easy. Let's go to hardest. Oh no, that goes way off the charts and starts ringing in my ears. So we're going to go back to linear. Here's the silent key. So with the overtones turned on, this should result in no sound when I press gently on the keys. Okay, now on an acoustic piano that would have made no noise, so let me turn off the overtones and this should reinstate the function of the silent, silent key. OK, 
Okay. Uh, tonal depth, perhaps, is the one that does it. Okay. So I've deactivated tonal depth right here. Activate, deactivate. Okay. Okay, maybe it's the release samples, mechanical. Each piano is a little bit different. As when I did this on Una Quarter, that's what it did. Okay, one of those other settings is is uh, competing with this. I found that on Una Quarter as well. I just don't know which one it is on this one because, to be honest, I don't use Silent Key very often on this. I haven't had a, a real need to, but if you did want to use it, there's that. Now this, the half pedal and repedal, it affects the release time and amount of resonance, and you need a, a special continuous sustain pedal, of which I believe mine is not. So you can turn them on. And our tuning, as we've we've seen earlier, stretched and tuning or temperament of the piano can be switched between stretched and equal tuning. The default tuning is stretched, which is the way the piano was tuned for sampling. Stretch tuning accommodates the natural. I think this is that word that I hadn't heard before. In harm, in harmonicity, in harmonicity of metal strings. Okay, uh, we're going to need a dictionary for that one. And then equal, equal is a, is a different set here. And all right. They sound pretty much the same to the, to f at first listen. Now, here is where you're tuning A440. We can tune A to 436 and it'll give a different sound. So that's we're using C as an example. So start off on, on C. Let's go back to 440. Starting at middle C. Tune it 436. That one I believe is a little brighter. And then we can tune it to 444. brighter. It's a little darker at 436, isn't it? All right, and switch to equal. That should be fun. All right, so these are settings you can play with to your heart's content if you so choose. Now, moving on from the piano page, we come to the effects section. Now this section is also loaded, so we have two categories here, effects and ambience. In our effects, we have our EQ, and we can play with, now each of these EQ settings have different uh, sections. This here, generally all noises are not routed through the EQ section for enabling a separate EQ control of the piano's main sound. Uh, so if you turn this on noises to EQ, the EQ section affects the noises, and we've seen that already in Noir. So we're just going to leave that off for now. Each of these settings has a different character. You have presence, shimmer, and air for the, the high frequencies, and then the mid frequencies you can choose between body, punch, and presence, as we can see here. Uh, body, punch, and 
bite. It says presence, but the, the category says bite, which it's on right now. And then we have base, bottom, and sub. So, for example, let's just play with the bass because it's fun. Okay. Now, if I change that to bottom, it should affect differently. Seems a little more rumbly to me. Again, extreme examples to make the point. Perhaps it rumbles all the same. Let's go back to bottom. That seems a little bigger. And then sub. Now we already have the sub on, so I don't know what sub EQ is going to do. This could be tooth rattling. Definitely down there it is tooth rattling. All right. Bite. Let's change it to body. Okay, that makes it more round and kind of in your face. Bite, which we had before. Makes it more clear, more likely to cut through the mix. Uh, punch. Seems to mix the character of both a little bit. All right, let's bring that down. Air. Crank this up. All right. Shimmer. And presence. I think it's exposed an unevenness in my scale playing, but presence it seems to add a little more sharpness than does shimmer or even air all right so those are settings you can use to to great effect now transient over here this accentuates the attack left or lengthens the sustain. So uh, that's what this does. Transient and activates the transient control section, which is right here below it. So here we go. Right lengthens the sustain. And then if we pull the knob all the way back over to the left, so we'll sharpen the attack, or accentuate it, as it says. And I'm accentuating it a bit as playing in a staccato, staccato, staccato fashion. So here we go, right here. see the sustain is longer with that. So we leave this typically in the middle. Let's look here again <laughs> at the compressor section. Once again, it's nice that you can do this without ever leaving Noir, though if you did want a third-party compressor, you could add one. So I'm going to pull it to 100 just to give the illustration. And our pop piano compressor, there's a number of compressors which we'll show in a minute here, but this will add a, a sort of brighter because it's pop and let's let's hear it i can hear it sort of grabbing the i turn the transient off you can hear it really grabbing the uh the sound and just crushing it All right now if we put it to nice and easy you can see there's a number of compressors right here. Nice and easy.
That was nice and easy. Hard limiter will be hard. So as you can hear as I'm playing softly, it really, um, everything's sort of up front, then as you play harder, it really grabs it and just crunches it down, right? And that is an effect that you can have with your compressors. Now, we won't go through all of them, but as you can see, hard limiter, sustainer, attacker, light glue, super slam. Let's listen to light glue. This is likely to, it's to be like sort of gluing the mix together. Now, because it's so extreme, you can sort of hear the compressor let go once I stop playing and the sound just expands. And so that, that keeps any of your hits from being too hard, but it's also, you know, you can really hear it working. So we, we typically have the compressor at about 30% on this piano anyway. Um, I am going to put it back to here's thick saturation. Over here we have the stereo image. This will enable it and the width changes it so kind of like we had on Unicorda and I think all of the the uh, piano instruments, at least the six that I have of native from native instruments. Uh, turning it one way to the left makes it sound mono and to the right artificially widens it. So this might sound upside down in my headphones but here we go. It doesn't quite sound upside down, but it does sound like something's missing because I'm listening in stereo headphones. And if I switch my headphone in, uh, monitoring to mono, it might sound just right. But here we're going to artificially widen it to 200% and hear that. That is super wide and that can be a, an effect that you may or may not want so i'm going to put it back to i believe 100 percent which is normal below that we have the style right now it's, it's continuous it's crackles now if we if we turn this on it will send 
all the noises to be processed by this. Now let's check it out here. All right, now we could change this, the, uh, the top part of it, which is the style category. And there's, there's three of their, there, there's the timbre, there's moving, and there's continuous. Right now it's on continuous. We're gonna move to timbre we'll, to give you an idea. This is taped. Let us now go to moving, and this will give you another another effect. So now this sounds like a, an old EP or something. It softened the attack and added a, a bit of a warbling wah type effect. And that may be an effect that you want or not. Now, that's a smooth low pass. We've got a bunch of other, other effects here, mid panning. And so on, as you can see, there's, there's many, many options here. Black hole sun, that should be interesting. All right, uh, let's go back to timbre. We can decide that we want it to be warmed up, which shows some tubes there. And continuous, we can decide that we don't want it to be sustained crackles. We want it to be shaked. We're going to put it back to timbre just because now here in the noise section we have several options we have by default the uh, and these are continuous ambient noises so they don't they don't stop when the piano stops playing so by default now it's up at maximum to make effect so you can hear it this is cell 3 studio in germany where this was recorded in fact uh let's go cassette recording okay um, flutter, cheap, flutter smooth. Now, the most interesting I think is Silent Hall because it's not really silent. Uh, tube mics. And then we have the interesting effects like, uh, well there's a number of ones, but I'm thinking particularly of, of the vinyl settings or vinyl settings. All right. And we can adjust the volume of these noises. You'd probably have it more like this. And I think this one even had the rainy sun. Did this have rainy Sunday? There was rainy Sunday on Noir, but this one just seems to have these sounds. All right, so if you did want the sound of like a record, you'd probably have it like, about like that. Alright, 
you can sort of hear it in the background. Now, I'm going to turn this off so we can hear the pianist. This adds the sounds of uh, the pianist, a virtual pianist. You can have the sounds such as squeaks, breaths, rumbles, and they're only triggered if the piano is actually being played and you can trigger additional piano noises when using aftertouch. All right, good to know. So again, it's a maximum for effect. And this will add, you'll hear some moving around of the pianist as I play. So you can probably hear the piano squeaking around and you can adjust the intensity. This will probably make it sound like he's breaking something. <laughs> That's quite intense, so moving around. And so, that is the pianist. Now, there are a couple other sections, and we won't go. This next section is the particles engine, which we could spend literally hours going through this, so I'm not going to do too, too much with it now. But I am going to explain it a little bit. So it activates the particles features, which triggers additional samples resulting in an aleatoric cloud based on the settings of the particles engine and the keys being played. So if I may translate a little bit, whatever you play, in this case, a major C chord, it activates, as you can see from the circles there, the samples to play. pattern based on what you've just played. Now there are a number of different settings. So this is plucked action. Uh, we can do a brushed pattern. That'll give you an idea of how, how this can work more in a more sustained way. So this is around an octave. We could have it be a low cloud, which means in the mode section, this is this controls the algorithm and there's density and variation. Again, we could spend hours on that section. Um, let's use one of the, the presets, the main presets, which will also adjust the algorithm and source settings. So we'll go metallic and you can see sound source has changed to mallet and mechanics. So it means mallets hitting the strings and the mechanical sounds of the piano. Now you can see the mode is set to close by, so all the sounds will be close by to what I'm doing right here.
Now, if we come over and we tell it, for example, just to give you an idea what this can do, to do a high cloud, right? Let's go back up. Now all of the samples are up above what I'm playing. Sort of like the high cloud that it's described as being. Now, we can do a low cloud, and it'll have the opposite effect here. In fact, I may want to play higher. Now, as I found, I, th I think when playing complex chords like that, a high cloud is good. There's also high and dark, high and bright, extremely fat, extremely bright. We'll just test uh, one more just to give you an idea. Uh, narrow. Oh, varying timbre. That should be a good one. We'll, we'll play with that one. Um, Now that, it, it varies where it is, which is why I kind of like the high cloud when doing something like that. So <clears throat> over here you have effects such as your low cut, your high cut, it's doing all the high ones and low. That's nice because again, if you want a sub there, and if you are running your, your piano sound through a sub, you may not want all of the low effects to go through it, all right? So that is a quick overview of the Particles engine and what it's capable of. Now we move over to the Spaces section. This is the fourth and final section. I'm going to turn the Particles engine off for now. So here we have the settings for our reverb knob, the in-depth setting. So I'm going to turn this on and we're going to go... So I have the size is set to about there, and this one merely adjusts the volume. So I'm going to bring it in at about negative 20. All right. And pre-delay. Now this is the amount of delay before the reverb takes effect. So you can think of this as ducking. You hear an amount of the dry sound before the reverb kicks in. Let's crank it all the way just to get an idea. put it back to zero. Now we can change the size of the reverb here. Okay, and then just for fun, we're gonna crank everything up like this. Let's take the size down, see what happens. Okay, volume's still pretty loud, so size to about 50%. So this is sounding like it's way back in there. 
Now, of course, this is the room in cell three, so it's not very, it's not very big as far as halls. It's not a hall. So if we were to go to, uh, there's a living room. So if it were in your living room, uh, large living room. Okay, now as we go over here, we can pick, these are room settings, so we can pick a dark hall. Okay, that's a large venue. Uh, church. Okay, yeah, that's one of those big, hard surface cathedral type places. So we have our categories. This is These are different rooms, as you can see, there's many of them. We won't go through all of them. We'll check out the grotto real quick. Okay, now I'm gonna set the volume at negative 10.7. Okay. Now, we can set it to vintage and then it would have, we have plates, uh, we have foils, we have digi, digital, spring, let's hear spring. That sounds meditative. I'm gonna run with this for a little bit. Could be used to great effect. We could spend hours just in this section, I think, going through all the reverbs. So that's vintage. And we have mystique. Now, this <laughs> chimney sweep, this is bringing to mind some of the effects we had in Una Corda. Here we go. I think there was one involving space. Gremlins, that should be interesting, okay. Uh, there's one more effect. Uh, this is the last one I'm gonna do in Mystique. I can hear the gremlins <laughs> type sound. All right. Now there's one more that I like and that is reverse, All right? And this will add, now you can change the timing of it to two beats, three beats, four beats, eight beats. Now let's just leave it at one beat for now. And there's a number of, of reverses here. So let's see. change it to two beats.
and that can be a fun effect as well. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the rooms just for sake of combining these in a minute. And we're gonna come over here to delay. Now this delay has been pulled from Replica, which is a delay by Native Instruments as we wrap up here. And here's our time. This adjusts, uh, synchronize. So activate the sync parameter to synchronize the delay repeats to tempo. In this case, that would be the tempo of the session, which I believe is 120 BPM. Yes, it is. All right. And now oh, this is changing the meter. Okay, let's bring up the volume of the delay. Pretty straightforward. Now, if we change it to 1 16th, that's pretty close. Now, right now it's a tape delay. We could put it in a modern delay. This would be more interesting here. You could put it to ping pong. Okay. Now, now here's how we adjust the time. So, now this can be a great effect if you wanted to have that sense of That might be an effect that you want. Now there's all different kinds. There's uh, there's diffusion, which is gonna mimic a, a, a reverb a bit more. So this can add some nice tones underneath. And once again, this is from Replica. So if you have the Replica delay, you'll have these types of delays. But if not, it's built in right here inside of more. How warm and beautiful is that? All right, that adds just some atmosphere around it. Now, <laughs> any number of these sections we could keep playing with. I can turn them both on real quick. And we could put this to, let's say, concert hall. We could mix the different volumes of this so we could bring the delay down, bring the reverb up, and that's a whole other sound. With the delay right in the middle.
Now, beyond that, and we won't go too deep into it, there are, we've just been playing with Noir Pure, but there's a whole other instrument that's a felt instrument that has the felt sounds built in, and that we will have to do a separate deep dive on. But here we have our, our most, maybe our most important section to get started, and that is your presets, all right? So we started with a basic Pure, and apart from that, this is just, all these sounds are pretty much just ready. You can, as you can see, you can tweak to your heart's content. But here we'll give you starting points for different moods as you want. Let's let's try emotional. And you can see it's adjusted all of these settings accordingly. We have our tonal shift twisted that way, our dynamics to the left, our color, so on and so forth. We have different, different settings turned on in here. We have our effects done a certain way. Now the effects are turned off in this section. And just by looking through and seeing what the presets are doing, that can kind of give you some ideas perhaps on how you would like to set up your your piano sounds and it, it, it gives you a good starting point so let's try this one Forte piano, All right? Another of the factory settings, we have uh, particles. This is beyond pure. This will give you an idea for a sort of a metallic sound. And that can be a good starting point. There's another one, which I believe is called was it Cloud. Bode Cloud. That's a whole other feel. There's one that was like almost like a pad underneath. That may have been one of the ones that I. One more deep down. very underscore.
All right. And then for sound design, which will give you a bunch of other sounds. We'll see if it sounds like a harpsichord here with the tonal shift whacked all the way to the left. I'm amazed at how much that does sound like a harpsichord. Uh, although it is a little bit more hammer sounding than a harpsichord. So ambient tremolo. So this probably has some of those effects turned on that we, okay, so the plate, and uh, well, here it is. Continuous, right? See, and all the noises are sent through that. So it's got that sort of uh, sound. You can see what other things they've done with it, right? Noises to EQ and everything. And lastly, vintage. So almost electric. I like the sound of this and, and this will be our last uh, sound for this deep dive. As you can see, there's much, much more you could explore in it. Um, we're just going to take a peek at what they've done under the hood here. So our mechanical noise is on. we got re-pedal, half-pedal, silent key. Uh, they have the sound of kind of whirly. Mm, they don't have the pianist turned on. Particles is off. Anything in spaces. Just the reverb. All right. So we're going to do this here. Uh -huh. 